Holla ballers! What's going on? It's Preacher thinking about playing a prop pally, eh? Well, you should be because they look fucking cool and they're one of the easier tanks to play. So hopefully patch 5.4 with all the new leveling stuff, you're going to have a blast and you're going to give this bad boy a try. I encourage you to. It gives you a great indication of stepping into tanking. And if you enjoy it, you can carry on to end game. So it's all good. What are we talking about then? Lots of choice. Got to make this so clear. Prop paladins have more choice in how to rock and or roll than any other tank class. They have so much stuff that they can be doing that you really need to be open-minded and don't be that guy who's like i take this it is better mm -hmm. i read it on x website what you're gonna find with a lot of stuff about the prop paladin is one website will tell you one thing another website will tell you another and they'll just be all like cold hard facts i'm gonna tell you how you get to make a choice because it is a choice ultimately we're obviously playing protections so let's look at our talents your first one is kind of important Movement speed is crucial to a tank because the faster you get to the mobs, the faster you start tanking them, the quicker you're there before the DPSs, the better time you're going to have with things like aggro and getting positioned and all that kind of good stuff I've talked about in my other videos. Now, each, each talent here has a purpose. So speed of light is great. If I have to get from here to way over there somewhere really quick to pick up some emergency ads or perhaps somebody has pulled something from miles away, I need to get my ass over there. Speed of light, 70% movement speed increase. That's going to fit that job nicely. Long Arm of the Law also has something to be said from it. Casting a Judgment, getting that little boost to get there quickly. Of course, to be in Judgment range means you have to be pretty close and you have to be lagging behind a little bit. You've got to be like there and trying to rush over. So I tend to find Long Arm of the Law is kind of cool, but not amazing. I personally love Pursuit of Justice. I love the passive constant movement speed increase. I'm pretty good at managing my holy power. Others of you might not be. And as such... What you need to be aware of is that when you pop things, have things like Pursuit of Justice, it is all down to your control over that particular ability. So Pursuit of Justice is my recommendation. I really like it. We have tons and tons of holy power flooding in as a prop pally. As such, I really like this one, but Speed of Light certainly has its opportunities to be great as well. This one doesn't really matter. You level 30 talents, pick whatever the fuck you want. It doesn't matter. Nobody's going to care. Now, not the same can be said for our level 45 talents. It's going to come down to Eternal Sh eternal Flame or Sacred Shield. I've seen the math. The math says Eternal Flame better. That's it. Now, yes. Okay. Yes is kind of an agreeable situation. I've been playing around with both to try and get some sort of form of solid opinion. There is disadvantages and advantages to both of these. Okay, let's talk about Sacred Shield first of all, because I haven't got it selected. Therefore, many of you will just go, oh, well, he's not got it, so I'm not going to do it. Sacred Shield is free. Six second cooldown and actually does its job very well. Keep it over 100% of the time without any possibility of failure. You can just keep Sacred Shield up. Has a reasonable proc chance and it's pretty damn cool. Eternal Flame. Now, the one thing to remember is Sacred Shield is an absorb effect, and Eternal Flame is a heal effect. It's effectively a heal over time. Sacred Shield and Absorb, Eternal Flame are heal. So notice the difference there. Eternal Flame works really, really well when you're not at full health. Sacred Shield will work regardless of your health, okay? It's still absorbing. It's still doing its job. Eternal Flame is not free. It's going to cost you three holy power. It's also going to be based off the idea of your Bastion of Glory. So some of you are saying, what's Bastion of Glory? A lot of you don't know. It's this passive stuff that goes on. When we go ahead and we cast a Shield of the Righteous. Joe's got a proc. There's my Shield of the Righteous. Boom. You can see we get this ability called Bastion of Glory. Your next Eternal Flame. Used to heal yourself. Heals for an additional 23%. Stacks five times. Okay, it stacks five times. So I'll talk about this. I'm going to show you a little thing that I do regarding this. So Eternal Flame requires three Holy Power. And it requires kind of the five stack of Bastion of Glory. Because if you've got those abilities together, they marry up really nicely to give you these wonderful advantages. Okay, they give you the benefit of this huge heal over time from your Eternal Flame. And it's going to do a lot more mitigation. There's the five stack. You see, I've got a nice little proc there for the five stack. Now, I can't use that yet because I'm going to need three holy power in order to fire off a really solid eternal flame. And there it is. Boom. There's my eternal flame ticking away there for 21,000. It's absolutely... It, it does more raw numbers. So if we could say that the absorb heals for X, eternal flame will heal for X+. plus. It procs more often, which means it takes more and more and more. Overall, it does more raw healing 
in terms of mitigation than Sacred Shield does. However, bear in mind it does cost you, it requires certain conditions, and it's a heal effect, and this is an absorb effect. So there's arguments for and both. I've tried both. The Tail Flame is pretty cool. It actually works really, really well with Divine Purpose, which I'm going to get to shortly. It's all right. It's all right. Both of them are pretty good. You're not going to fail. You're not going to fall over on the floor dead suddenly because you didn't take either one of these. Selfless Healer, not particularly great for tanking. Eternal Flame or Sacred Shield are the way you're going to go. Hopefully, you can make that decision now. The other 60 ones, you're generally going to roll with Clemency. There is something definitely to be said for the Unbreakable Spirit, though. In reduced cooldown divide protection and lay on hands is really really nice there's no doubt about that no argument from me for raw tanking ability unbreakable spirit is really fantastic i as my paladin tend to prefer a little bit of a supportive role which is again why talents are a choice and when i'm doing stuff i generally do um while i'm doing guides and stuff i tend to do a lot of lfr so i can get some nice quick footage for you guys as such, I run into crazy motherfuckers who need a little bit of help. They need a hand of protection every now and again. They need that blessing of freedom. They get stuck in sand traps. They derp it around. All that kind of stuff. Therefore, clemency, I absolutely adore it. I really adore it. Is that I can help out multiple people on multiple occasions. But there's also unbreakable spirit there. If you're raw tanking, you're doing your progression, all that kind of stuff. And you're just worried about your ass not dying. Kind of important. Level 75... This is where arguments are going to start. Go ahead and make those in the comments. Personally, it's, for me, it generally comes down to a personal choice between Holy Avenger and Divine Purpose. There is something to be said for Sanctified Wrath. Just going to read that. Reduce the cooldown of Judgment by 50%. And causes Judgment to generate additional Holy Power. Avenger Wrath also increases healing received by 20%. So, Sanctified Wrath is obviously pretty fucking awesome. Right? No one's arguing that. No one's, no one's, no one's debating it. It's pretty cool. Holy Avenger, though, lines up really nicely with our other abilities. And as such, it allows us to put out tremendous amounts of threat and or DPS, depending on how you're looking at it, on demand. We have no trouble generating many Holy Powers. We have lots of Holy Power generating abilities as prop. As such, it translates into a lot of big bursty damage and a lot of big bursty tanking mitigation. Divine Purpose, though. I like Divine Purpose, is what I'm going to say to you. I'm going to say I prefer Divine Purpose because I think it marries really nicely with the Eternal Flame. And that, in saying that, I need to reliably be doing five, uh, five Shield of the Righteousness in order to generate my five stack of Bastion of Glory and then get the three Holy Power in order to use the Eternal Flame in order to keep it up 100% of the time. Divine Purpose has that effect for me pretty much every single time. I never really run out of that, and I like that aspect of it. On top of that, sometimes I just love the idea that when I'm doing a lot of AoE tanking, I'm doing a lot of stuff like that, is I can just churn out Shield of the Righteousness onto everything, just spreading everything out and just making a safer time for everybody. But if I was boss tanking, if I'm doing some boss tanking, I'm probably going to roll with the Holy Avenger. I'm going to have a much better haste level to generate more reliable Shields of the Righteousnesses anyway. On top of that, I'm just going to... I mean, I'm going to prefer Holy Avenger. But for general purpose tanking, for generally having a good time and being the main sort of trash tank as well when you've got those slacky tanks dragging behind you, Divine Purpose works really well for me. And it actually really synergizes well with Eternal Flame. I love both aspects of that. Again, coming down to the level 90 talents. Again, it's going to be a choice. Raw science, mathematics, and numbers are going to tell you that Light's Hammer does more healing, more damage than Holy Prism. An execution sentence is a wonderful ability for single target boss tanking. If I'm tanking one boss, say a Raden type encounter, sure, I'm going to rock the execution sentence, maybe. If it's Lei Shen, I'm probably going to think about some other abilities because there's a lot of AoE going on there and a lot of healing needed. Got to remember, your prop pally is essentially bringing an extra healer. They are really that powerful. Holy Prism is my choice. I prefer this one. Because personally, I like the on-demand burst healing that this thing puts out. It just goes boom. There. There's your healing. There it is. It's done. It's also a wonderful ability for getting things at range. Holy Prism for me uh, works well with how encounters work now. So the science tells me that Light's Hammer does more healing, more damage. Execution Sense is obviously the single target ability. But when it comes down to actually being in a fight, for actually being there on the face of it, it's not the numbers that particularly bother me. It's not like, oh, well, statistically speaking, this spell is better. What I tend to find is that if there is a huge AoE ability going on, which regularly there is, it's like, oh, this is what we call the blast wave of death. 
Popping out that holy prism instantaneously after that happens keeps people alive on a much more regular basis than, say, Light's Hammer. However, if I'm in a fight with constant AoE damage, say, ooh, Einkon, something like that, where everybody's taking radiated large amounts of damage, then perhaps Light's Hammer's the better buffer there. It all comes down to your encounter, guys. Remember that. All your talents are down to what does the encounter demand, not what the, the science machine or the math tells you is statistically better. It comes down to what's more effective here. In most cases for me, Holy Prism actually works better than anything else. Sure, if I wanted to do a lot of AoE damage, I'd probably take Light's Hammer. No doubt about it. But that's not my purpose as an old school kind of tank. My damage is kind of irrelevant for my purposes. I like to just make sure I'm still alive. Now, Glyphage. Remember, it's Glyphs, again, with the prop pally. It's unlike a lot of classes. Our Glyphs are really good. It's really, really good. Alabaster Shield is generally your go-to. It's unlikely you're going to be swapping this bastard out. Your successful blocks increase the damage of your next shield of the righteous by 10%. Stacking three times. Wonderful. Divine Purpose can fuck that over on occasion. Be aware of that. Then it comes down to the others. This is going to be your most swapped glyph of all time. The glyph of divine protection. It removes a portion of the magical damage reduction and adds some physical. Now, every single fight, this is where you told me the clear minds are going to go. Fight on fight basis you're probably going to be swapping Glyph of Divine Protection. Because there's just occasions when there is some nasty magical attack, and then some occasions which there are nasty physical attacks, in which case you need to pick and choose your Glyph. Good Paladin tanks will always have the correct spec of Divine Protection when they go into a new encounter, okay? Think about what the fight does and which one's going to be best for you. I've seen Paladin tanks, even at heroic progression level, in my raids, pop magical damage cooldowns against physical attacks and look like like complete spaz wagons you don't want to do that make sure you got the correct glyph in there this is your choice glyph this is the one that's like ah i can pick and choose a little bit glyph of the battle healer was kind of nerfed away we're going to be rolling seal of insight for most of our tanking time that's cool um i have found on many occasions that the healing from glyph of the battle healer on the raid is as significant as actually bringing another healer now that is not always going to be the case do not make that mistake but still there's a tremendous amount of healing that comes from this glyph and it's so supportive depending again on the encounter are you going to be regularly healing people that are around you if so glyph of the battle healer is pretty tremendous it really is but as i said we have a lot of choices in here uh one of the main the main Main ones that a lot of people like to roll with them you're going to be swapping a lot is glyph of focus shield tremendous little glyph your avenger shield is not going to hit other targets but it hits 30 percent harder real again single target boss fights you're not going to be tanking ads why would you not want the extra 30 percent damage from your avenger shield when it hits so effing hard because it's damn good it really is damn good also bear in mind things like Glyph of Double Jeopardy. Some people like to roll with that just to increase their damage even more. Again, I'm not the big damage whore I want to be. Uh, I just generally don't roll that way. But I'm fully aware that the damage from a tank is more than enough to really sort of push people that way. Also bear in mind your Glyph of Holy Wrath. Which is going to stun some things for you and all that kind of shit. Lots of stuff going on there. Lots of stuff going on there uh, that can really help you out. So bear in mind that your glyph choices, again, as pro, your talents and glyphs are going to be swapped a hell of a lot. Let's talk about gearing. Our gearing, again, choicey. I know, right? You want the straight up answer from me. Well, I'm going to give you the straight up answers the best I can, but at least enable you to make the correct choice. That's what I prefer to teach you, is to make the correct choice. Two main ways of gearing your prop pally. One is lol stamina. The other is lol haste. Now, why is it called lol? Because... Simply put, it's not that easy to go ahead and justify one over the other sometimes. There will be arguments to the death of justifying the other one. Technically speaking, and from my personal experience, haste is my go-to. I effing love haste on my prop pally. I have a great time with it. I have far more, we'll call this the control build, is the haste build. I have far more control. So when I'm gearing my prop pally for the content this guy does... Hit as high as I can get it. Expertise capped if at all possible. And then hasting through the roof. I always check my set bonuses. Are they worthwhile? Get some more haste. Haste stamina gems. Pure haste gems. Strength bonus? Get out of here. I want more haste. 
It's going to be really good for improving your control, being more reliable with how your mitigation works. I've always preferred mitigation over taking raw hits and hoping a healer saves me. I love haste. It keeps me damage intake nice and smooth. Love it. Stamina gemming. Now... Stamina is that thing that plagues World of Warcraft. There's been more than a few occasions when I've been tanking on my old prop pallet to make some content for you guys where some derpy derpy derper has whispered me saying, lol, I have more stamina than you and I'm wearing blues. You suck. You suck. You suck. Stamina don't mean a whole lot to tanks. Sometimes, okay? If you're thinking about stamina gemming, you must have a genuine reason why you're thinking it. A lot of people on Heroic Progress will switch over to Stamina while they learn how hard this boss hits. Some bosses, particular bosses, hit so effing hard, you need more fucking health to survive those attacks reliably. That's what we're after. Reliability. What we don't want is a tank that sometimes survives this fight and sometimes doesn't. We want a fight... And a tank that goes in there and survives all the time, reliably. If you're getting killed regularly because you're taking just a flat out large massive hits that you can't seem to do anything about and you can't get cooldowns ready for and you simply do not have the HP to cope with the hits that this boss is doing, then you're going to think about stamina jamming. If that is not the case, you're going to rock the haste. You're going to rock the haste. If that is not the case, you're going to get the haste, okay? You're going to be reforging away your parry and your dodge, all those traditional tank stats. And if you're not sure why, parry and dodge caused this to happen. Parry, parry, dodge, parry, dodge. Oh, I got hit and now my health disappeared. T that causes healers to spam expensive heals, causes them to blow cooldowns at the wrong time. A lot of avoidance used to be cool until we realized how awesome smooth damage intake is. By smooth damage intake, you're a tank. You're going to take damage. That's science. What we want is nice, regular, soft blows coming into us all the time. And our healers can use their nice, mana efficient heals and heals over time to keep us topped up without worrying about us. What we don't want to see is a tank who takes no damage. So we start slacking a little bit. And then suddenly the motherfucker's on 5% health. That's a bad time. That's a bad time. So you're going to go with haste or stamina, okay? Haste, generally, in nearly all cases, unless you are doing some sort of heroic progression, which is a boss that you're just not sure about, you're going to be taking haste. It's just flat out better for mitigation and control. Stamina has its place. Has its place. But bear in mind that place is pretty damn rare. And do not be that tank who says, I have more HPs, I are better tank. Nope, wrong, get out. In terms of rotation, I recommend a couple of add-ons. Uh, I use Tell Me When for tanking, and uh, as you can see, I set it up so my priority list is from left to right. Makes it damn easy. Prop Pally tanking is one of the most trivial experiences in the entire universe. It is. I know a lot of Prop Pallies will be like, well, I put a lot of work into it. Well, good for you, but it's still trivially easy. Um, you're basically going to be pressing whatever generates holy power on cooldown, and then working through the rest of your list. Remember, Shield of the Righteous is off the global cooldown, which means you don't stop pressing other things to press Shield of the Righteous. You're going to be working through your rotation, keeping on your cooldowns, and it really is as simple as this. The choice you need to make as a prop paladin when tanking is, am I tanking more than three mobs? If tanking more than three mobs, you will not use Crusader Strike, you will use Hammer of the Righteous. And that is it! That is all it is. That is the only choice you have to make. In every other situation, it remains exactly the same. So if I'm tanking three mobs, I'm just going to put Crusader Strike on all of them. It's more effective. G, 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 G. If I'm up to four mobs, I'm going to swap that Crusader Strike for Hammer of the Righteous. That's it. Everything else remains exactly the fucking same, okay? It's a really easy way to get into tanking. Just make sure you've got Seal of Insight up. And of course, make sure we have up our Righteous Fury. Vitally important. Alright guys, we're going to show you some gameplay now, some of these things in action. I hope you enjoy. Bye.